We are Calvary Chapel, Half Moon Bay, and uh, hopefully everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Your bellies got full of food, you're full of uh, thankfulness, but this morning, let us fill our hearts with uh, God's Word and His music, so let's stand. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Great is your love and justice, God. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all the people sing along. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough, heaven reaching down on us, your grace is enough for me. Good morning. Why don't we turn to each other and say hello? <laughs> we stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship him now. How great, how awesome is he. And together we sing. Oop. 
<laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with his glory. We stand and lift up our hands, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship him now. How great, how awesome is he. And together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. And together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. The earth is filled with his glory. The earth is filled with his glory. became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness he humbled himself and carried the cross love so amazing love so amazing Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, his body the bread, his blood the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so amazing, yeah, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel. for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of 
Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord on the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name i sing for joy at the work of your hands forever i'll love you forever i'll stand nothing compares to the promise i have in you My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas roar at the sound of your name i sing for joy at the work of your hands forever i'll love you forever i'll stand nothing compares to the promise i have nothing compares to the promise i have Nothing compares to the promise I have in you.
together before you today to worship you, Lord. Be with us. Clear our hearts and our minds for this worship hour, Lord, and let us let your Holy Spirit pour into our hearts, Lord. We pray for all those that are here and those that cannot be here, Lord, that you might minister to our needs. Uh, you know us intimately, Lord, what we need. Um, thank you for your word, your promise, your sacrifice to us. Uh, thank you because you are in control, Lord. Even though we are beset with all types of uh, tribulations, Lord, this pandemic, um, all of the worries that beset us, let those fall away, Lord. And uh, let us give ourselves to you and truly let you be the king of our lives, Lord. Uh, we pray, Lord, for all the people that are suffering as a result of the pandemic, whether it be because of the disease itself or, or because of the shelter in place and uh, unemployment and all the other things that come from it, Lord. We know you are in control. Uh, we know that you will deliver us. Uh, let your holy will be done in our lives, Lord. We pray for those that are on the front lines, ministering to people selflessly, day in and day out, Lord. Nurses, doctors, medical technicians, police, um, those that are abroad in our armed forces, helping to protect our country and to keep uh, peace. We pray for them, for their safety, for their safe return, Lord. Um, Lord, we pray for our country, that you may uh, watch over us and that all things will be done in accordance to your holy will, Lord, that you guide and give vision to those that govern, Lord, that they will govern righteously, that they will govern in accordance to your will that they will uh, keep in mind their hearts of servants to, towards their con constituents, Lord. We thank you again, Lord, for this, for this beautiful, beautiful day. We thank you for each other, for the fellowship that you have given us here. And uh, Lord, uh, just speak to us today. And uh, thank you for your many blessings, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Good morning, Half Moon Bay. I wish I could be there in person with you all. Uh, we miss and, and love you guys so much and are, are so grateful for your faith in the Lord. Um, as you all know, we are living in a, a pandemic, but, but, but not really of a virus, but of fear. Uh, people are afraid. Uh, fear is abundant. It, it seems like it's, it's multiplying. Everywhere you look, there is a feeding frenzy on fear. Uh, people are afraid of what people think. Uh, people are afraid of COVID. Uh, people are afraid of governmental overreach. Uh, people are afraid of the future. People are afraid of death. Uh, people are afraid. And how should a Christian think through these issues? Uh, when, when, when difficulty is around the way, I mean, political unrest, uh, persecution of the ch church, it's here, and it'll be getting stronger. Shouldn't the, the Christian uh, act differently than the unbelievers? You know, what should our response be? Uh, Spurgeon said, There is only one creature that God has ever made that doubts him. The sparrows do not doubt. They sweetly sing at night as they go to their roost. Though they do not know where tomorrow's meal shall be found, the very cattle trust him, and even in the days of drought, you have seen them as they pant for thirst, how they expect the water. Angels never doubt God, nor the devils. Devils believe and tremble. But it was left for man, the most favored of all creatures, to mistrust his God. This morning, church, I want to remind us that we can trust the Lord, that we do not have to be afraid that the fear 
of COVID is not the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the government or persecution or what people think or whatever else you put in there is not the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is. And so to help us with that, let's open our Bibles to Psalm 91. I want to know what God says about this, right? To, to put myself in perspective, to put you in perspective between trials and troubles, plagues and predators. You know, what do we do? Do we flee? Do we fight? What, what are we to do? How do you deal with fears? And, and for us, as we struggle with fear, anxiety, worry, and doubt, Psalm 91 is a, a good comfort for our souls. And I hope after today you will uh, go back and regularly read Psalm 91. When, 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 when you get those, th th to feel the, the creeping doubts and, and anxieties, Go back to Psalm 91. And, and, and it could be because of COVID or, or anything else in life. But Psalm 91 will reset us properly. You know, what does God say in his word? And that is always the, the best place to go. Because when we look inside and when we look at, at um, feelings or circumstances or, or the news programs, it will offer no help. This psalm reminds us that we cannot out-trust our God. We can take him at his word. He is faithful. And so as we go through Psalm 91, I want us to, to think about this. Now, I, I don't usually do things like this, but, but I heard this and, and I'm going to use it. You know, I don't mean to be uh, cheesy, but, but it's a way to, to, to help it be memorable. Because we all struggle with the sin of, of fearing man and fearing other things besides God. We struggle with the, the sin of anxiety. And, and so to set our minds right, like a, like a GPS, this is how we're going to deal um, with, with, with uh, fear and worry and doubt and, and lack of trust. A, a GPS gets us going in the right direction. And that is how we're going to look at this psalm. So, so GPS, right? G, God is great. P, uh, God, is, God is P. He provides or protects and, and he secures, right? Simple. GPS. <laughs> psalm 91. You can, you can trust the Lord in spite of anything that's going on, internally or externally. Um, and so to start, Who wrote this psalm? Where, well, we're, we're really not sure. It, it sounds like it's a good follow-up to, to Psalm 90. Um, that psalm, so Psalm 91, and, and some think Moses wrote Psalm 90, so Psalm 91 and Psalm 92 were also written by Moses. You know, and it doesn't matter if Moses wrote it or not. The Holy Spirit did inspire it. And this is the language, this, this is the language that the, the Spirit of God gives to his children that they might not take security in not in vaccines not in politicians not in our bank accounts but in the triune God um, Athanasius he was a great defender of the faith he who fought for the truth that Jesus was God he he said this to a friend he said, if you desire to establish yourself and others in devotion to know what confidence is to be reposed in God and what makes minds fearless. In other words, if, if, if you want to have a fearless mind, he goes on, you will praise God by reciting the 91st Psalm. This is that kind of psalm. If you have kids and, and they're little and, and they have a bad dream and they're uh, freaking out and you go and you grab them and, and you hold them close so they, they feel secure in, in, in dad's strong arms and, and you tell them, you know, everything is going to be okay. That is the perspective of this. Because when we get our mind elsewhere, we will have 
doubt, anxiety, and mistrust. And so this psalm could be called the, the anxiety psalm. Not, not causing, but preventing. Okay, so point number one is the triune God is always great. So trust him. Verses one and two, as we read this, um, see if you can spot the names of God or the titles of God, right? To, to give us a God-centered perspective on the issue. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Do you, do you see what he is doing right there at the beginning? He, he is looking through the lens of who God is and, and his names and his, and his attributes. Now, how, how many do you count? Well, there, there are several. First of all, the Most High. This is a divine title, and it focuses in on, on God as sovereign. He rules. He, he reigns. He, he is above. So right at the very beginning, he's trying to tell you, listen, viruses aren't sovereign. Governments aren't ultimately sovereign. There is a sovereign God. And he is not just high and exalted. I mean, he, he is the most high. And when poetry is written in the Old Testament, in the Psalms, this is a great title that is used often. God is the exalted ruler of the universe, from the molecules and atoms to the solar system or, or universe. God is sovereign. He is most high. My fears aren't the most high. The world isn't the most high. He is. And do you notice there is another word that describes who God is? You know, to set our minds away from self, away from events, so we focus correctly, so that the just shall live by faith. It's the Almighty, El Shaddai. Genesis loves this language. Moses loves it. Job loves it. It has to do with strength. It, it has to do with, um, if you think about like lifting, right? There's, there's, there's weight lifting. And then there's power lifting. This has a sense of that ultimate power and strength. So you have a problem. You're worrying. You're stressing out. You are fearful. And, and by the way, the, the world is selling this. You know, how, how, how do you make people do things? One, you play into their greed. You know, scratch this, get money, put it all on black. And another way to get people to do what you want is to make them afraid. People sell fear. They make money off of fear. And so the first thing you need to do is, is go, I, I have to see things properly. I, I have to see things properly that, that God is most high. God is the powerful one. But that's not all. It would be one thing if he was exalted, but does he care? Is he concerned about me personally? And, and you see in verse 2, it has LORD in, in all caps. It, it's the name Yahweh, the personal covenantal name. Yahweh the Father, Yahweh the Son, Yahweh the Spirit. He cares. He makes promises he keeps his covenant not only is god most high not only is he powerful but he cares and you think the ultimate care the the ultimate concern the the ultimate is the incarnation of jesus christ i mean this is the covenant name of god this is seeing the world's events through the lens of who god is not the other way around. And if you look, there, there's still uh, an, another one. Uh, God. Uh, it, it's, it's Elohim. When you see the English word God in the Old Testament, it is creator. He, he makes things out of nothing. God creates light. So he is the creator. He is the sustainer. He, he provides. So right at the very beginning, when you were thinking 
How do I navigate the world? How do I say where I, I need to go as I'm, as I'm walking on this, this pilgrimage uh, to heaven? I have to make sure I do it through the lens that God is great. Problems aren't great. I am not great. God is the great one. He is the most high. He is the powerful one. He is Lord Yahweh and he is the creator. And, and, and you will notice, which, which, is, which is interesting, there are some other words used, uh, metaphors or, or figures of speech designed for us to, to trust him. Right? Do you notice? Ver verse 1, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow. All, all that is talking about is, is this great God who, who gives sh shelter, great uh, shadowing, great cover, oversight. Verse 2, My refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I'm, I trust. I mean, this psalm is designed so that we trust God our Lord, and lean not on our own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make our path straight. Okay, so so I, you, um, to, to walk by faith, not faith in faith, but faith in this triune God, looking to the Lord for security. And even though there are legitimate dangers, the psalmist will pile up image after image after image to make sure we get that God is great and he protects and he secures. Uh, maybe the, the verse that summarizes the, the, the book of Ruth, it, it's, in, it's in Ruth chapter 2. And in Ruth chapter 2, it, it talks about how faithful God is. Okay, and listen to what one commentator says. I wonder if... You can say this. Upon that ground, that is referring to who God is, I will confidently commit myself in all my affairs to God. And doesn't that sound like what the Christian does? Isn't that what the Christian is supposed to do? I'm com committing my eternal life and my temporal life into the care of God? I'm committing the future into your care. And I will confidently do that. Why? Not because of who I am. Not because of my faith. Not because of what I do. Not because of my nation. Not because of my status. But because of who God is. I will take refuge. I will seek safety and comfort in this God. I mean, this is the way the Psalms start off. Right? Psalms 2 Psalm 2, blessed are, are those, are all who take refuge in him. Right? God is great, church. When, when your trials are great, you need a greater God to deal with them. Right? When, you're, when your trials are tiny, a little kind of pocket pet God will do. Right? See, God is faithful. Psalm 89 says, He is to be greatly feared in the council of the holy ones and awesome above all who are around him. Right? So the psalmist at the, at the very beginning says, I'm going to have to make sure that I understand, that I see everything through the, through the lens of, of who God is. Right? GPS, guidance. God is great. Number two is, is found in verses 3 through 13. God protects. Now, what you will notice as you look at these verses, um, we, we have a pronoun change. In verses 1 and 2, it says, uh, I will say, I trust. Now it's you. Uh, right? He will deliver you, verse 3. He will cover you, verse 4. You will not fear, verse 5. A thousand may fail at your side, verse 7. Verse 8, you will only look. Verse 9, because you have made the Lord a dwelling place. Verse 11, he will command his angels concerning you. Verse 12, bear you up. Verse 13, you will tread. 
Okay, so we've gone from one kind of pronoun, I will say this, to another, you will say that. Now, some commentators say, I, I don't know if it's true or not, but, but it, it, would be, um, it, it would be great if this was, but, but, but all the Psalms are, are, are songs. And so verses one and two are, are sung by this part of the choir, and, and verses three through, th three through 13 are sung by this part. And they're sung and repeated uh, back and forth to each other. So, so I'm going to trust in God. And then over here, God is going to deliver you. And so you hear this kind of back and forth on, on, on who God is. You know, he is my personal God. And he is also your personal God. I mean, when you see all these, these yous in verses 313, I mean, you should know they're, they're in the singular. I mean, he, he could be preaching to the choir, but he's preaching to the individuals on the choir. He's, he's preaching to individuals so that they're not going to, um, technical word, freak out when, when, when this world is, is going to sell you fear. And, and the world is. Now look at the protection. Verse 3. God is not only great, but he protects. You know, all this figurative language is, is designed to do one thing. To increase your confidence in who God is. Verse 3, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. By the way, uh, this, this, is this psalm re relevant? Verse 3, deadly pestilence? Verse 6, nor the pestilence that stalks, uh, stalks in the darkness? Verse 10, no plague sh uh, come near your tent? Sounds pretty pertinent for today. Here in verse 3, he is going to deliver you from the snare of the fowler. What is a fowler? Well, it is someone who catches birds. And if you're a good fowler, the birds are at your mercy. Because when the fowler catches a bird, there is no way for it to get out. And so this language, uh, this, this, this metaphor from the, the world of birds is that God will deliver you from the fowler's trap and the deadly pestilence. It's, it's almost like he's going to load up all these words of comfort with figurative language. So it will apply to every situation, right? It wouldn't just apply to COVID. It wouldn't just apply to when my loved one is sick. It wouldn't just apply for what about money for my future and my retirement. And it, could, it could apply to anything. That is the idea here. God is committed to protecting his people. And here we have a figurative language. And, you know, a, a, a bird can't protect itself. And we can't protect ourselves from many things. We're helpless in many, many areas. But God will protect. Verse 4, look, look at this, this language. How, how, how great is this? He will cover you with his pinions. And under his wings, you will find refuge. Three times in this psalm, we'll find refuge. And his faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. This is uh, so good. This is language to fortify my soul. Because when we're tempted to just go after anything that, that anyone is selling, and before you know it, you know, we, 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 need, a, we need a reset. It's like my computer needs to be rebo rebooted. I mean, because after hours of watching CNN or Fox News or being on social media, I'm like, what? <laughs> what is going on? And here we have this language. Protection. Faithful protection. And that verse that I mentioned from, from Ruth 2, it says, Boaz prays. The Lord repay you for what you've done, and a full reward be given to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. This is that exact kind of language. I mean, do you see what's 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 going on here? Cover with pinions under his wings you find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield. His faithfulness is a buckler. Uh, that is great. That is encouraging to my soul. I, I don't have to defend myself. I have a defender, the, the Ancient of Days. 
Now, the language of, of wings, of course, is figurative. God doesn't have wings. <laughs> I mean, the whole psalm could have been, you know, God's great and he will protect you and he will keep you secure. But with this language, you want to sing it. It, it lends itself to, to telling other people. And this phrase, uh, under his wings, in, in this language, Spurgeon says this, Had this been invented by uninspired man, it would have verged upon blasphemy. For who should dare to apply such words to the infinite God? But as he, as he himself authorized, yes, dictated the language, we have here a transcendent condescension such that it becomes for us to admire and adore. Does the Lord speak of his feathers as though he likens himself to a bird? Who will not see and hear a matchless love, a divine tenderness, which should both woo and win our confidence? That, that, that is the idea. So I have these problems. I don't know about the future. Everyone is selling fear for a living and I'm just eating it up. What, what do I need to do? Well, I need to make sure I understand these truths about who God is. In, in, in church, God is protecting you. If he gave his son to die for you, and the spirit of God, Ephesians 1, to seal you till the day of redemption like, a, like an engagement ring, and when the I do's come and the regular wedding ring, he, he says, you know, I'm, I'm going to be faithful to you until the very end. And so why are we so frightened? Why am I so frightened? Didn't Jesus say something similar, similar kind of language? Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often I would have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Satan is a roaring lion. God will protect you. Sin destroys. God will protect you. For those who have taken refuge in Christ, the risen, risen Savior who has died uh, on behalf of sinner and, and they have trusted in him you are fine safe and secure verse 4 again says a shield and a buckler it has the idea of a wall you have a shield to protect you but then also in front of the shield uh, is this wall that is put up to bring protection to protect you from your enemies he is faithful. He prote protects. No wonder Paul says to the, to the Christian, who shall bring a charge against any of God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Not, not a what, but a who. And he's probably talking about Satan. Is Satan going to do that? Then he gets to the what? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Could I add viruses, government, persecution, and everything in between? As it is written, yes, we do suffer. The, the text shows us that. For your sake, we're being killed all the day long. We're regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things that come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is for the Christian. And of course, our, our, our eyes are immediately thinking, Yes, I, I believe that, but I wish I believed it more. And that is why we look to the Lord Jesus, who ultimately dwelt in the shelter 
of the Most High, who, who ultimately uh, abided in the shadow of the Almighty, who ultimately uh, said to the Father, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust, not just at Calvary, but also in the Garden of Gethsemane. And God the Father certainly delivered the Son from death itself. So, so back in, in, in Psalm 91, verses 5 and 6, there, there are some, some, some pretty bad things out there. I mean, do you, do you think that there might be bad circumstances that, that might just get me? <laughs> Verse 5, you will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. Do you know what he is saying? Do you see it? You will not fear. I think the writer is saying, you know what, I expect you to obey this. Running around afraid of everything, except the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. Running around afraid of, of any, everything. In knowing who God is, he's your fortress, he's your refuge, he's the most high, he's the almighty, he's Yahweh, he is God. He does all this for his people. If he had the son die for you, do you not think he will protect you? Therefore, you must not be afraid. He expects you to obey. Now, I'm certain in the church that I pastor, which is a small church, and, and I'm sure in, in your church there, there are many people who are paralyzed by fear, right? Be, because of COVID. And I'm not saying COVID isn't real. My family has personally been affected by it. I personally know people who have died from it. But I'm saying you are not to be fearful of things. And the real issue isn't the virus. It has to do with death and who conquered death. And so the author gives some things here. He does this day and night, darkness and noon thing, day and night and everything in between. It's, it's everything. It's a, it's, a, it's a poetry device so you understand completeness. So God is going to take care of everything. And what do we do? Right? When, when God's enemies fall, what, what is our response? Verse 7, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near to you. Why? Because God protects. Not only is God great, but he re protects. And what is, what is our response? Get them. Fight them. No. Here is what we do. Verse 8, you will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. When it, when it comes to the enemies that are real, that are, uh, that are people, that are, that are after God's people, what, what do we do as Christians? Well, we just sit back and, and, and watch them perish. Now, this has nothing to do with evangelizing them. It just has to do with, with God is going to take care of you, right? So he'll take care of your enemies. You, you just look on. It reminds me of uh, Exodus 14. And Moses said to the people, uh, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You only have to be silent. Verse 9, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge. And we get some reminders from verses 1 and 2. And, and let me say it in this way. Um, you've trusted in the Lord. You've agreed that Jesus is the risen Savior. You believe that tr truth and, and you put your trust in Him. And therefore... You know when things go on in this world, you might have things happen to you, 
but nothing will escape the providence of God. And he has not ordained anything that will happen to you that isn't for God's glory and for your ultimate good. Verse uh, 11 and 12, some might ask, is this a messianic psalm? <laughs> Satan sure thought so. He took some of these words and gave them to Jesus in the, in, in the great temptation, which thankfully, you know, Adam was w tempted and failed. Israel was tempted and failed. David on a rooftop was tempted and failed. How many times have I been tempted and failed? Is there any going to be anybody who, who is going to be tempted and win, will not fail? And even when Satan tries to slip in these verses, Jesus doesn't fail. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. On their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against the stone. Every bit of God's personal care extends to every particular Christian. God is faithful. Satan was not able to derail Jesus. Of course not. Look at verse 13. There, there, there are some pretty bad things here. You know, back in those days, what was, what was worse than, than, than the worst thing you could run into? Verse 13, you will tread on the lion. You know, how would you like to to run into a, a, a lion in the street. And the adder, you want to run into an adder? A deadly poisonous snake? What's, what's worse than that? The young lion and the serpent, will tra you will trample underfoot. I mean, these images you use, is the, these are images that, that can hurt people, that can kill people. You will tread on them. Now think about that for a second. Fear does what to people? Well, it makes them panic. It makes them um, um, paralyzed. You know, I, I don't know what I, I can do. I, I can't move. Is the person who sees who God is, this great God, this protecting God, what, what happens to this par person? Paralyzed? No. You will trample on the lion and the adder. It's, it's, the, it's the language of uh, forget passiveness. You can be aggressive. I mean, this is what, what, what I would tell my congregation. You are still called to evangelize. Well, I'm too afraid of all this, all this stuff. Hey, <laughs> live with confidence. Live with trust. Use your spiritual gifts. Work. Serve, evangelize, live life because God is your mighty God. He is your saving God. Don't just crawl into a hole and die. No, we still live with confidence. Well, how do we get ourselves through life? Well, God is great, God protects, and now we'll see. That God secures verses 14, 15, and 16. So think uh, big picture with me. When you're tempted to fear, uh, to be worried, to have doubt, I mean, it could be about your children's salvation, it could be something about your spouse, about, about your health, your finances, the future, it could be about anything. Well, Psalm 91 is a good template to walk through. And to preach you to yourself. You should regularly preach to yourself. Here, here, is, here is my usual preaching to myself. Quit it, Ryan. Ryan, just stop that. Ryan, repent. Ryan, how can you be so stupid? Don't do that anymore. <laughs> that is the negative side. And then the positive side, God is faithful, Ryan. You can trust him. Great is thy faithfulness. His mercies are new every morning. God, please wash my mind by the renewing of my mind because I am prone to wander. I'm prone just to fall into anything. I'm afraid of everything. And I'm worried about everything. You know, if someone comes in for counsel, I won't call them stupid like I call myself, but that's going to be the same conversation for them. 
I'll, I'll, I'll preach to them. I'll remind them who God is. The, the whole thing about life uh, in general, it is, it's, it's a Trinitarian solution. Who is God? And I am his. So verses 1 and 2, I will, I will. Verses 313, you are going to be protected. You are protected. And now we hear something else. Verses 14 through 16. And look carefully as you read your Bible. Do you see a quotation mark that starts in verse 16 and at the end of verse 16? Yes? So someone is talking. Someone who hasn't talked before. Now we hear from God himself. And here is God's response. This is how he, he gives great assurance, great security, great, great protection. This is a pledge of God. What, what does God himself say about it? My government says one thing. My spouse says one thing. The, the media says one thing. I would like to know what God says. Who gets the last word? Well, in this psalm, God does. And in our lives, he should. Verse 14, because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. Now, watch all the, the I wills. I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. God is committed to you, Christian. If the son died for you, does he now just go, Oh, well, you're, you're on your own. I hope you make it. No. I will deliver. I will protect. I will answer. God promises. What, 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 is, what does the text say here in verse 14? I like this. It's, it's marriage language. Because he holds fast to me. That, that is, that is it's cleaving. Like, like you hear um, husbands and wives. Husbands are to leave and cleave. That is uh, hold fast uh, in, in love that is a passionate desire I will deliver him I'll protect him because he knows my name that is also marriage language Adam knew his wife this is the language of, of, of a relationship of God and his people that the marriage reflects think of Ephesians chapter 5 where we have Christ and the bride, the great picture for a man and a woman, not originated in time, but in eternity past in the counsels of the triune God. As a father and the son come up with a, a plan to redeem his children, and the father sends the son, and the son goes, and the spirit of God attends. God is the, the, the one doing the talking here. And God is protecting and preaching to those who are worried and weary and fearful. Verse 15, what, what kind of great father is God to his children? Those who are trusting Christ for their salvation? Verse 15, when he calls to me, I might answer, I might be around, when they or he or she is in trouble, <laughs> does it say that? Of course it doesn't say that. When he calls to me, I will answer him. What a great thing. The goodness of God as Father. My son started uh, lifting a little bit of, of weights. Uh, and, and, and I'll spot him. I'll, I'll tell him, I got you. I'm not going to drop this and just let it crush you. I got you son and if I'm a good dad and I'm sinful how much more is God a good God a good father here, here is, here is what, what God says okay God I'm afraid God I don't know what to do God I'm hurting 
God, I'm, I'm sinning. Please forgive me. When you call him, guess what he does? He answers. And, and what is probably even better than answered prayer and the assurance that, that God hears is that middle phrase in, in, in verse 15. I will be with him in trouble. And I, I don't have to, to go about it alone. He is my spotter. It's too heavy for, for me. I can't lift it. Think of the fiery furnace in, in Daniel chapter 3. There was one more person in those flames. Matthew 28, the, the great commission. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So, so, so why am I freaking out and paralyzed with fear over this, that, or the other? And then it says in, in verse 16, With long life... I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, this is probably talking about the, the temporal length of days, you know, back to the covenant in, in Deuteronomy. Um, but as Christians, we, we see where this is going. It's, it's not just about the, the temporal salvation for us, as we know. It's, it is the ultimate salvation and, and, and show... Uh, Show him my salvation, right? It says, what, what, a, what, a, what a great truth of, of God's refuge, of his deliverance. It's not just temporal, not just the covenant established in Deuteronomy, keep these commandments and live in the land, but ultimately the ultimate promise of God. Can I ask, listen, listen to these. Do, do these words wash over your soul? And guide it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice. Though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes through, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in the praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The, the, the Christian life is, we put off one thing, fear of anybody but who God is. And we put on something else, trust and confidence that gives way to praise. I just wonder in my own life, if, if, if my trust meter, if, if my praise meter is or good working or, or, or my fear of everything, you know, that's going to happen. What, what's going on? What, what, is, what is my heart? It's like the man who, who said, you know, Lord, make my heart sit down. I need my heart to be calm. I need to be rebooted in my mind. You know, sometimes I get so focused on, on something that I need to be reminded, hey, you're thinking too temporal. You're too focused on your feelings. You're not focused on the word. Why do we go to church on Sundays? Well, there are, there are too many reasons to list in our remaining time. But, but one of the reasons is to hear the good news. And, and the good news is God can be trusted. He's faithful. And we need to have a realization that we can confidently entrust our souls to the living God. You know, God wants us to have assurance. And so many people want to, to take away our assurance. 
You know, if you drink the wrong thing, if you eat the wrong thing, you say the wrong thing, you don't do your, your Bible devotions, you don't do this or that, all your assurance is gone. God knows our frame. He knows we are but just us. He knows we sin. But since he sees us in Jesus, we're good. You look to yourself, you're not going to get much assurance. You look to Christ, you're going to get a lot. You look to this God, who is the most high, who is almighty, who is the Lord, who is the God, of, 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 who is the refuge, who is the fortress. You know, I wish I loved Jesus more. That's true. But my standing isn't based on do I love him. That has nothing to do with the gospel. That's all law. Did I bear enough fruit of the Spirit? How firm is my faith? How faithful am I? Do I do I love God enough? Do I read my Bible enough? Do I evangelize enough? Have I confessed enough? Have I repented enough? Have I believed enough? Wrong. We need to do all those things, but in light of who God says, I will deliver you. I will protect you. You know my name. When you call, I will answer. I will be with you. I will rescue you. I will honor you. I will give you salvation. Why? Because of Jesus. What is my strategy for life? Well, I have to have a strategy that says in light of who God is, maybe I can answer with, with Romans 8. If God is for us, who can be against us? To what degree would God be before me? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not graciously give us all things with him? Church, God is great. So trust him. God protects you. So you can trust him. God secured you. He gives you a pledge, so trust him. The Lord Jesus knew and proclaimed that God was great. He knew that God protected him. He knew that God would raise him from the dead. And that, my friends, is our confidence. That is our strength. We are hidden in the precious sun. We have no reason to fear, to worry, to fret. But when we do, we open to Psalm 91 and find the God who is great, who protects and has secured us. Let me close with a quote from Robert Murray McShane. Be not afraid. Nothing shall ever separate you from the love of Christ. God bless you guys. We miss you, love you, we're praying for you. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, wow, <laughs> what a message. Still soaking that one in, um, just uh, wow. Um, God bless Ryan um, and the heart that you have spoken to him and given to him that he just, he just nailed it <laughs> this morning. Um, yeah, fear, um, God. Just let us be reminded that, gosh, when we wake up every day and, um, you know, go to our cars, walk out our front doors. There's, there's so much that can give us anxiety and fear and, and overwhelm us. But you're, you're more powerful than that. You're more powerful than that, Lord. And uh, what, a, what a beautiful reminder of, of the sermon that Ryan gave us this morning, that you are more powerful. You know, to put our trust in you and to... Um, to just lean on, on, on you for understanding, not others, 
you know, um, or godly people we can lean on, but, you know, the media, the ev- all the input, all the input, everything that we take in, let us be protective of what we put into our minds, into our ears, into our souls. And first and foremost, let us just soak in your word and your promise that it gives us the confidence to wake up in the morning the peace to step out of our homes and, and, and just the love that you give us and you fill us with. When we do have fear in our hearts, we have people that we encounter that are fearful. May our cups, may our spiritual cups be full, full of you and your word and your promise that when we go and we, we meet others that are full of fear, anxiety, whatever it is, over being overwhelmed, that we're full of you and your word, and you are our foundation that we can carry them when they can no longer carry themselves. And we can lead them to you if they're an unbeliever, Lord. It's just a... It's, it's, <sighs> Having you as our, as our foundation, you know, we are human, you know, we do get fearful, but gosh, the promise that you give us and is just, when we're reminded of that, it just fills our souls, it fills our cups, it fills us, it, you fill us with confidence, Lord. We pray for those that don't believe, that don't know the promise that you have. We hope that we could be leaders with our actions, with our words, that we would lead others to you and to your promise. Thank you so much for your gift of salvation. For Christ Jesus, he, he's our hope. You're our hope. Thank you so much for everything that you give us, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So... I um, want to say one thing. Um, Pastor Brian is going to be sending out an email this week, um, so more to come. And uh, for those of you that may not have access to email, um, you know, we can reach out and let you know what's going to be going on with Church Ongoing. And, uh, but just, just one last thought, you know, um, as the new order came out uh, yesterday, I was like, you know what, I kind of was filled with anxiety right? And I was, I, I, you know, but no matter what happens, these are just walls. These are just walls. You know, God doesn't stop. His word doesn't stop. You know, he continues to go. So I don't know, just, just something that was hitting my heart. So, all right. One last song. <laughs> I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true and it's my joy to honor you. In all I do, I honor you. You are my king. You are my king. 
Jesus, you are my King. Jesus, you are my King. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. In all I do, I honor you. In all I do, I honor you. Amen. God bless everybody. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, have a great week.